What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to identify if something is direct variation, inverse variation, or neither, okay? So I'm gonna do a few examples right here with some equations, and then I'm gonna do some with some tables, all right? Now, the difference between direct and inverse variation is right here. So if something is direct variation, you're gonna have something like this. You're gonna have y is equal to some number times x. And for inverse variation, it would just be, well, the opposite of multiplication, it would be division, right? So you're gonna have y is equal to basically just some number over x. All right, so for these few examples right here, the first thing we're gonna do is solve for y and then see if it matches one of these two forms, okay? So let's start with this one right here. Uh, we have x, y is equal to five. So we're gonna solve for y, right? So we can just divide both sides by x. These cancel out, so then we get y is equal to five over x, right? So as you can see, we got y is equal to some number over x. So this means that this equation shows inverse variation, okay? What about this one right here? We have y is equal to x minus nine. As you can see, we already have it solved for y. And here we have x minus some number. So here, this doesn't show uh, any multiplication or division, right? So this would actually be neither. Okay, uh, here we have y over four is equal to x. Again, we need to solve for y first. So let's get rid of this four by multiplying both sides by four, All right? Those cancel out. So then here we get y is equal to x times four, which is just four x. So as you can see, we have some number times x. So this shows direct variation, okay? Uh, here we have eight y is equal to x. So we can get rid of this eight two different ways, right? We can divide by eight on both sides, but one thing that'll be a little bit more helpful here is just multiplying both sides by one eighth. Okay, so then on this side, the one eighth and eight cancel out. So then here we're left with y is equal to one eighth times x. So one eighth times x. So as you can see, we have some number times x. So again, that would show direct variation, right? And another way that we could rewrite this is as y is equal to x over eight. Okay, so both of these mean the same thing. So just don't confuse this bottom one, right? We have x over some number, whereas inverse variation is some number over x, right? Uh, these two are not the same thing. Okay, and then here we have x, y is equal to one fifth. Again, uh, here we can get rid of this x. We can either multiply both sides by one over x or we could just divide by x, right? So this time let's just divide by x on both sides. So then here those cancel out and we get y is equal to one fifth divided by x. Now in order to divide fractions, you need to multiply by the reciprocal, right? So what is the reciprocal of x? Well, that would be one over x, right? So we need to multiply one fifth by the reciprocal one x. Okay, so then here we get that y is equal to one over five x, right? Y is equal to one over five x. So we have some number over x. We do have another number basically attached to x, but that's okay. But you can see it's still basically in this form, right? So again, that would mean this one is inverse variation. Okay, so here's our first table example. So here are our x values, right, two, four, six, and eight, and our y values, negative 12, negative six, negative four, and negative three, right? So the first thing you wanna do is basically just make a new table, and on top we want to find uh, the products, aka we just wanna multiply x and y, and on the bottom we just wanna divide y and x, okay? So then we're basically just gonna mimic this table over here, so in this first spot, we're just gonna multiply our first pair of x and y, okay? So our first pair is right here, right? Two times negative 12, and that's equal to negative 24. Here, we wanna multiply our second pair of x and y. So our second pair is right here. Four times negative six is negative 24, right? Third pair, uh, six times negative four, again, is negative 24. And the fourth pair, eight times negative three, is again, negative 24, okay? Now on the bottom, we're going to divide, right? Y divided by X. So negative 12 divided by two is uh, negative six. Negative six divided by four is negative six 
fourths. Third pair is negative four divided by six, right? Negative four over six. And lastly, we have negative three eighths, okay? Now, what we wanna do is look for a pattern in one of our rows. So obviously you can see that there's a constant pattern on this top row, right? Where we multiplied X and Y, okay? So again, these are the products and these are the ratios, okay? So since our pattern occurred up here with the products, right? The products have that constant pattern. That means that this table shows inverse variation. Okay, it's a little counterintuitive because you think products, you think, oh, okay, that means y is equal to a times x, right? That's the direct variation formula. So that means products, but it's counterintuitive. So if your products in this case are constant, then you would basically pick the opposite. That would mean inverse variation. All right, here's the second table we're gonna look at. And again, the first thing you wanna do is just make a new table where the products go on top and the ratios, or basically just division problems, go on the bottom. One, two, three, four, yeah, that's good. All right, so on top, we're gonna to multiply x times y, the first one, right? So three times 12, that's equal to 36. Uh, the second one, seven times 28, is 196. This third one, 10 times 40, is 400. And the last one, 15 times 60, is 900. Okay? Now, on the bottom, we're going to divide uh, y divided by x, right? So 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. Uh, 28 divided by 7 is e equal to 4. Uh, 40 divided by 10, that's equal to 4. And 60 divided by 15 is equal to 4. Okay, so as you can see, this time our constant pattern is on the bottom, right, with the ratios, right? So since the ratios are constant, that means this shows, again, it's counterintuitive, right? So this shows, this table, direct variation. Boom. All right, here's the last table that we're going to go over. So again, the first thing you want to do is just make a new table uh, where we're going to find the products and the ratios, right? So one, two, three, four. All right, so let's multiply our first pair right here. So one times two, that's equal to two. Two times four, that's equal to eight. Three times eight is 24. And four times 16 is 64, okay? So there's no pattern up here, right? So let's check the ratios. So two over one, that's equal to two. Four divided by two is two. Uh, eight divided by three, we'll leave that as eight thirds. And 16 divided by four is four, okay? So there's no pattern on the ratios on the bottom row either, right? So since we don't have a pattern on the top or the bottom, that means that this table shows neither direct variation nor inverse variation. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.